Chelsea has always been a very poor community. Uh, we have always been a gateway community and immigrant community. When I went to school, um, and it continues today, we would be sitting in classrooms if there was a world crisis. Um, within 15 to 18 months, we would get the refugees from that area. We have currently in Chelsea, we speak, uh, we have 54 countries and we speak 36 different languages. We are still a very dominant um, immigrant community. Uh, high mobility has been, it's been proven that it impacts academic achievement and it actually widens the academic gaps that you now have to close. When I look back, one of the major benefits that they provided to us, they professionalized our, um, our teaching course. Under BU, they had started the assessment system, but we, we started looking at test scores in the aggregate in, our, in my classroom. I knew I was succeeding far more, and my students were succeeding far more than that test score was showing. And when you peeled back the layers and you, you um, disaggregated the data, you saw it was because your newcomers were coming in and f disproportionately and falsely, falsely lowering an aggregate score, and yet we were being judged on that. Ironically, um, John Silver himself was very interested in the mobility, but he never could get his hands on something that would prove it. When my dissertation came out and he read it, he, um, it, 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 he told the, um, one of his assistants to come back and tell me that he always believed mobility was one of the <coughs> excuse me, major contributing factors um, to Boston University not being able to prove that the overarching model of, re of taking the Chelsea Public Schools over and, if, and becoming the, you know, with the management team was actually very successful in many, many areas except we were not able to move that needle on a one-size-fits-all assessment that people could completely believe that the model was successful. It was always evolving, but that's what transformational change has to be. It has to be flexible, it has to be evolving. Um, we moved away from being transactional, and I think that's the biggest piece um, for all of us. But you're not engaging the community in knowing about where those changes and those, those baby steps are, are being made um, towards the greater vision, towards the, the bigger growth, um, then you're also, you, you can't expect people to embrace you. Um, but they were considered outsiders. Um, or the other phrase was um, when we were in the, in the schools and the BU management team would come in, um, you know, the buzz from one teacher to another in the classroom, you know, uh, the suits are here, the suits are here. So, um, yeah. By year 17, 18, um, and I think I was assistant superintendent by this time, um, they really weren't involved in the day-to-day -day workings of the, um, of the school system. We had completely taken it over. They were still here, the management team, as the functioning school committee in a sense. Um, but again, it's not involved the day-to-day -day workings of the school system. They're not making curriculum decisions. They're not, um, you know, they are approving the budget. But more is that second lens and second pair of eyes on us, not the primary drivers. And the key piece for the, for the university would be to empower the teachers. Get to the teachers and, you know, um, support them give them the education, um, the, the inspiration to think outside the box. They will bring it back to the classroom and then you're gonna create the gra grassroots of the students. But you need an army of educators and so the universities need to embrace the educators and get to them first.